What is going on? It's Alex coming back at you with another video. And today we're going to be doing round two of two of this mock draft 4.1. If you are new, feel free to check out the mock draft video round one I did yesterday because it's going to be explaining a lot of the trades that did already happen. If you are new, though, still would love for you to stick around, like, comment, subscribe. You guys know how to use YouTube. Let's get up to 10K because that is exactly the big goal for the year. Obviously, it's a stretch goal, but we're still going to have some fun getting there. Regardless, I'm going to give a quick little recap and because uh, a lot of trades did happen. But again, this is going to be fun. Let's get through this. Starting out with, you know, I'm going to let you read. How about that? We'll discuss the trades. I had a little flippy floppy here with Vegas. Um, then Vegas moved back twice. You know, then, you know, still snagged guy. I'd probably be willing to grab at that spot. Uh, we had Green Bay move back right here. And... Uh, we actually had Jacksonville move back here as well. So again, you guys get to do this, uh, get to check it out. Uh, I had Tampa Bay take a quick little move up right here. Actually, just kidding. They had a move up right here with the Steelers and they swapped and ended up getting different quarterbacks. And then again, we actually had a trade up into the end of the first round, both here as well as here. So lots of fun. Again, for those of y'all who might say, oh, I don't even have a team that is still having a second round pick, beware. I like to trade into the end. So if you're going to click off video, you might as well just zoom to the end to see if I ended up just being absolute batshit crazy and drafting somebody for you guys with a trade up. But again, let's get right into this. Let's have some fun. Pick number 33, the Ravens. It's to me down to corner. And I believe I've already taken Dwight McLaughlin. Yeah, I took him to the Cowboys. Max Melton was a placeholder value. Uh, you know, Dwight McLaughlin would be the one dude who I'd be desperate to get if I'm the Ravens. Beside that, you know, their running back core is just full of a bunch of random dudes. They're trying to play money ball with it. And when it's so crucial to the offense, I know that Greg Roman's offense has more passing in it. But when it's just so crucial and you don't have an elite weapon besides Lamar, I think it's time that you take a peek and get an elite weapon. I'm going to go Trey Benson here. It's down to Trey Benson uh, Bucky Irving or Marshawn Lloyd. All three of them are spectacular in their own right. But Trey Benson, just to add a little bit of flair, it's going to be, he's my number one running back. So uh, we're going to be doing that. Also, feel free to check out my best at every single positions video, which is essentially, I actually have it listed on the thumbnail, an all pro team for the 2024 NFL draft. And basically, you get to see my favorite guys at every single position rather than having to go and watch all those dedicated videos. Also, it's fun to keep track that way. Pick number 34, we have the Panthers. Uh, Panthers are in the market for a wide receiver one. They're going to probably try to trade for somebody, but I still think they could be in the market at this point for maybe a number two. I know that you have uh, Jonathan Mingo there, but you know Jonathan Mingo, I wasn't extremely high on him. I will just put that out there. But at the same time, I assume they're going to trade for one and you know, hopefully, I mean, this doesn't remove this pick from this, but, you know, it is what it is. Let's just say because of the fact that I know that we've actually, I had some Colts fans bring it up, but I assumed in this situation, Michael, uh, Michael Pittman would end up leaving. Maybe he went to Carolina, but we're probably not going to do that for any of the other ones. I'm going to actually go Braylon Trice here, helping out that defense. A lot of injuries have been holding this defense back. I know helping out Bryce would be the smart thing to do, but I assume we could always do that with more picks as well. Braylon Trice is still a top 10 player for me, and I'm still waiting uh, to see a little bit more tape from him before I make a final decision on where he ends up landing. But, you know, he's been significantly worse this year in terms of pressure rate, which is very concerning given the fact he doesn't even have a club on his hand. But uh, he's you, you can't deny the fact that he had like a 33% pass rush win rate last year, and he did it really really efficiently in a very translatable way. Don't know what's going on this year, but I'm excited to dig and find out. Pick number 35, Eagles. How he got his little trade back cash money. Now, for me, the two positions I'm really, three positions I'm looking at is right tackle because I do think, uh, you could end up looking at Blake Fisher round three. Uh, I know that that's, well, actually we have 64 as well. I think that's a legitimate idea. Great length, high potential. Like you want to have a an insurance policy in case we end up losing Lane Johnson. He is not the youngest spring chicken in the world. I think he's older than Fletcher Cox too, but that is a position we could definitely go after. 
uh, right tackle, linebacker, defensive back. So uh, we have them listed right there, essentially. I know wide receiver three, but you know this team can play money ball with that. There's a lot of money that will be probably tied up in the receiving core soon. Probably don't want to add another super weapon there. But um, looking at it, Jason Marshall's had a rough year. But you got Denzel Burke here, who I think would be a really good understudy. Kamari Lasseter, again, you get another Georgia guy too, so it fits. But I think that, you know, the main area of weakness on this defense is this linebacking core. And we're going to get Jeremiah Trotter Jr. here. You know, just somebody who has a high level IQ. The Eagles are not afraid of taking smaller, shorter linebackers at six foot, 230 pounds. But you have him and N'Kobe Dean. Again, not the biggest linebacker duo, but in this draft, it's kind of just what you have to deal with. And Jeremiah Trotter Jr. is very smart, very good against the run. He's going to be a good asset. Pick number 36, we ended up getting Cooper DeGene in round number one for the Saints. Because I know, because I ended up trading back with the damn Packers and was like, ha, gotcha, bitch. But I think if you actually add in someone like Romo Dunze, that would be pretty damn awesome. It's good value. I know a lot of people like Rome. I'm still waiting on more all 22 before I try to crown him with anything. Uh, Romo Dunze is a good selection at this point. Troy Franklin is as well, but I feel like his skill set is very much the same as uh, I, I would say Troy Franklin is essentially a worse version, graded better to be fair, than Chris Olave. Uh, Chris Olave, again, holistically is a wide receiver. You know, he's, he's spectacular in the role that he's in. Uh, again, I've graded all players on a holistic scale. Basically, everybody's on the same playing field, which means that if a team values certain things over another, they're going to be better. Uh, and, you know, Troy Franklin's incredible, especially in that role that Chris Olave's in. He would be, he's, well, you see it right here. He's number 31 on my board. Or is he even 31? I'm tripping. There we go. I don't know why the hell the thing was over, but uh, he is number 28 on my big board. Regardless, it's really down to wide receiver for me like that. That really does feel like the best move you can do. I know that there's some D line that you can grab here, maybe even a linebacker with Tommy Eichenberg. You know, linebacking core isn't getting very much younger and you've had success going to uh, going to Ohio State to grab linebackers like Pete Warner. So that's good for you. Tight end, I think, is a sneaky one. You could end up snagging somebody there. But I'm going to go Romo Dunze here. You know, 6'3", 210 pounds, just a really good build. And he's very complimentary to Chris Olave as well as Michael Thomas. Pick number 37 for the Raiders. This is part of that trade with Minnesota. I think Graham Barton might be an excellent move. You can get him to replace Van Roten and kind of be that balance with, I know Van Roten's been excellent as a pass protector, but Graham Barton's going to be better as a run blocker. And then you don't have to pretty much rotate Alex Bars as well as Greg Van Roten. Also, he can sub in at center. Also, he can sub in at tackle. I think just the value is a little too good. We ended up trading back and getting, uh, why don't we have a second second round pick? I'm tripping. Oh, because we got Quinn Ewers. Ha, huh, forgot about that part. Um, just want to double check. I mean, we still need defensive interior help. I so want to go Graham Barton here, though. Hello. What the hell happened there? Um, but regardless, I mean, I'm really looking at Graham Barton pretty heavy right now. Uh, defensive interior wise, you do have some good dudes here. You got some good players. Uh, but I mean, honestly, you can wait. I'd rather wait and get Dante Corleone in the next round and just get a stud on the O line for Quinn Ewers. So, Graham Barton, it is. Pick number 38. Speaking of teams that could probably really like Graham Barton, we have the Green Bay Packers. This is the Aaron Rodgers pick. And uh, for this team, I actually might go Kamari Lasseter to get some defensive back help. I know I already ended up getting a safety, but Kamari Lasseter, just being able to develop another high athletic Georgia corner, not a bad idea. But to be fair, we do have pick 43. I'm not worried about the running backs going in this range. I'd rather go and secure Kamari or Denzel Burke. The question is, what do you want? Somebody's going to be running 4-2 and needs a lot more development or Denzel, who pretty much is like he has a ton of talent to him. Maybe he's going to be in that 4-4 range. I'll go with Denzel Burke in this one just because I really love him and I want to give him a shout-out. Uh, pick number 39, New England. Uh, we ended up going and trading up in the last round for Olu Fashanu, and that's a really good one. Love seeing Olu Fashanu on this team. We're going to get a wide receiver, though. We are. And there's a lot of fun options here. 
Uh, Troy Franklin, to me, is the next best guy. I think he's spectacular. People aren't talking about him enough. Some people will highlight that quarterback is a good idea. Uh, I'll just give a, a couple of picks that I would potentially consider here. Troy Franklin, for one. Uh, potentially Xavier Leggett. I mean, 6'3", 227, and he's probably going to have one of the highest top speeds. Uh, A.D. Mitchell's been incredible. I think Xavier Worthy's heavily overrated, but he's a good guy in the system that he'll, uh, in his particular role, as a deep threat. But A.D. Mitchell's special. He really is. The big issue's been injuries for him. He he looks extremely dynamic. I'm going to go A.D. Mitchell here. 6'4", uh, about 196, so not necessarily an X-build receiver, but he's as close as you'll probably get without getting there. Pick number 40 for the Bengals. Uh, very lucky. Oh, actually, speaking of luck, you got Brock Bowers in round one. So screw you. I was about to say you get lucky with Jalil Billingsley. Nope. So I am going to look at the tackles here. You got Troy Fautanu. I actually am going to be in the mood for Javon Foster here. He's been performing very, very well. And he's always been one of my top guys. So, I mean, he's been here at 47 for a hot minute. He was my tackle one for a while last year. I think there's one issue is that he doesn't really develop mid-season, but he's been getting better and better. He is, I believe, a fifth-year senior this year, so he's going to be an instant impact. And with Joe Burrow's health, we all know that that's going to be a pretty big need. Pick number 41 for Arizona. We ended up grabbing, I think we had a, did we have a trade back? No, because that was too far for the Rams. Uh, We have Leonard Taylor and Keon Coleman. Yes, Michael Wilson's been doing incredible. I was a huge fan of Michael Wilson. I'm praying that health that was an issue at Stanford doesn't become a problem because that could end up being a major oof in that situation. Regardless, I'm looking right now at Kamari Laster pretty heavily. Wide receiver as well as defensive interior have been addressed, but corner has not. So we're going to be going Kamari Lasseter here out of UGA. Pick number 42, New York. Uh, there is a good chance that Saquon might want out of there. Uh, which you would need a running back in that situation. A lot of people are talking about quarterbacks. J.J. McCarthy could be actually a pretty damn good fit into the system. Uh, Cam Ward is awesome. So I do want to mention that quarterback is, if you want to put the money aside, viable. Uh, Besides that, we've already gone wide receiver with Emeka Buka. I think interior offensive lineman is not out of the question. There is no way they dropped Cooper BB that much. That's wild. That's straight up wild. This team was absolutely nutting over Cooper BB this whole year. That's crazy. Uh, Regardless, Zach Zinter, no pun intended, uh, Zach Zinter is a really good selection as well. You know, you'll be able to have him end up being paired up uh, with your center that you drafted last year. That's slipping the top of my mind. But I think that, I don't know why center is listed as a need. John Michael Schmitz, that's the name, is... You know, and he still has plenty of gas in the tank. Let's just say that. So we're going to go Zach Zinter here out of Michigan. High power offensive lineman. Only issue really is length, but he's going to help get that run game going. One of the best run blockers in the class. I'm not a fan of Layatu Latu. Just going to call it out right now. I rewatched him this year, and I just don't think his game's translatable. Pick number 43. Uh, debating on Nate Wiggins at this point, but I think we just went Denzel Burke. And because of that, we are going to get a running back. Blake Corum is awesome, but he just looks a little bit too slow compared to what he was. He does look like he's taking a step back after his ACL tear. I'm always open to being proven wrong. Sometimes guys just need a little bit more momentum to get back to where they were. I think Audric Estime is a great choice here because of the fact that he fits the aggressive style that the Packers have. He may be my RB9, but that doesn't mean jack shit because I really like Will Shipley. I love Jace McClellan. Rocket Sanders is awesome. There's just so many really good running backs in this class that when people are mad at me, mad at me for having Braylon Allen and Trey Henderson much lower than them, they're like, oh, you think they're crap. I don't. I don't. I think they're solid backs in their own role. I just think there's some spectacular backs in college right now. Audric Estime fits exactly the mold that I would want for the Green Bay Packers. Pick number 44 for the Eagles. Um, This is going to probably be Nate Wiggins. I know I haven't had any trades in this, but we're going to get Nate Wiggins to be a backup defensive back. And, uh, you know, he'll be better than the other Clemson DB you have on roster and Mario Goodrich. Pick number 45. This 
is going to be Jalil Billingsley. All right, looking at it, I want to double check what I did in round number one. Jerzon Johnny Newton, which is a great choice. Uh, we're going to go after Jatavian Sanders. You need tight end help. I think Brevin Jordan's ascension is awesome, but he's just, there's not enough time for him to truly end up showing out the way he needs to, to, you know, pretty much push away the value of this pick. Pick number 46, Tyler Newbin's awesome, by the way. There's no shade being thrown here at any of these players. There's just good players on the board. I think this actually would be a good spot for Newbin. I don't remember exactly what's going on with the Browns roster in the offseason. It's slipping my mind, but I'm pretty sure Delpit's up for a contract. So uh, we're going to go Tyler Newbin here, who's an absolute freak show, well-deserving of this pick, and they steal another top-tier safety in round number two. Pick number 47, we have a team that snagged my number three overall player right tackle, Talise Fuwaga. And now I'm going to be looking, potentially Austin Eckler is going to be gone. So it's a good class to potentially snag someone like Marshawn Lloyd, who's honestly a really, really good fit. Yeah, but like you can just wait. With a team like this, you can wait. I obviously wish Jatavian Sanders were here. He'd fit Kellen Moore offense really well. Uh, I really want to also look at linebacker and defensive interior here with potentially losing out on Eric Kendricks for the future. I heard a lot of good things about Danny Stutzman. He is on my radar for sure. I'm going to go Tommy Eichenberg, though. Yeah, very high IQ player, just somebody who's going to be consistent. And in this defense, it's kind of what you're looking for. You just need somebody to not worry about at this point. Pick number 48 for the Jaguars traded back. So I think we actually got, yeah, a second round pick out of it. So two picks for the Jags. And then we also snagged, I think, Christian Haynes. Absolutely. My number 11 player in the draft, most likely my number 10. Because, you know, unfortunately, one of my star players here in Braylon Trice is most likely going to fall. But regardless, Josh Newton's a really good pickup. He's good value at this point. Quality veteran that can really add something. Kalen Carson as well. You know, TJ Tampa, good name down the board to target. Jason Marshall, I, I've been hearing that he's probably going to go back to school. So that's why I am uh, a little bit putting it on the back burners. Kalen Carson, Josh Newton, both of them. I haven't seen Kalen Carson in all 22. That's why I don't have an official grade. It's probably why I'll admit him from this. But Josh Newton was a good, good corner. I was a big fan of him before even knowing other people were. So not saying I was first, but I'm just saying I was not influenced by other people into liking Josh Newton. I'm never influenced by anybody into liking players. You know that. As soon as people like somebody, I will try to find a reason to be critical, mainly because not every player works. As much as I want to be optimistic about everybody, you deserve the truth, and the truth is not many people actually work out in the NFL. It's unfortunate. It really is, but you know it is what it is. Uh, Commanders, we ended up drafting a Marius Mims, starred right tackle to continue protecting Sam Howell. I am actually going to go Barrett Carter here. I know that it might be a little bit of an overlap with Jameen Davis, but the talent level is sometimes too good to pass on. You don't even have Cole Holcomb on, on your roster. He's on the Steelers, and that's usually a bad sign, but you know it is what it is. The Rams, so we traded up for Jared Verse in the first round. Incredible value. Uh, JT Tumalau is still here, and I still like JT. Uh, he's somewhere in here. I'm forgetting where I put JT Tumalau. I should have put the damn dots next to JT. Here we go, 61. So again, I am a fan, but uh, this team could use some offensive line help. Troy Fautanu would be such a good fit. I know that you'd have to kick him to right guard, and I'm not a huge fan of that, but the fact that he can play left tackle for you, and then he's going to be a really quality guard, to me, that's excellent value, and the Rams have been sniping value down the board. So they're going to get into your offensive lineman back-to-back years, but this one actually has a lot of experience at left tackle. Pick number 51 for the Falcons. I think I went Bo Nix. I'm like sold on Bo Nix in this offense. Yeah, I think you could look at another wide receiver in this situation, Xavier Leggett, but you can't deny the fact that JT Tumalau is here and you brought on uh, Bud Dupree in the offseason, 6'4", 270. JT Tumalau, 6'4", 270. You had a need, you addressed it with free agency. Now you're going to be addressing it with a quality starter. I know Zach Harrison's there, so you also get that chemistry right away. A lot of people love Leotu Latu. I'm just not a big Leotu Latu fan. I wish I were. I'm not. Uh, pick number 52. So we went wide receiver. Again, most likely that's not going to happen if, since Michael Pittman. Thank you for correcting me, by the way. 
I uh, just bought like 22 acres of land there. So he wants to stay in Indy. That doesn't mean you can't sell real estate, but again, it makes it a little bit more difficult. I'm going to look into this DB market. Keelan Carson's the guy who I'm probably going to target here because, you know, we ball. And uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Get some DB help for this team. Uh, just be able to lock them down a little bit more. Steelers, we ended up moving back and taking Joe Milton. I know a lot of people aren't a huge fan of that, but at the same time, one, you know me, I'm a huge Joe Milton guy, but two, he adds the mobility and the arm power that you know young Big Ben had, and I think that's exactly what you need. It's a fresh start. It has the higher ceiling than Kenny does, and Kenny's a good quarterback. He's not a bad quarterback, but he's not somebody who's going to deliver us to the Super Bowl. We just don't have the system in place for a game manager to bring us to a Super Bowl. We need big plays. That's been the Steelers mantra since Big Ben came in. All these big plays. You got Martavis Bryant back in the day. Antonio Brown making crazy plays. Juju Smith-Schuster. We've had guys who make plays. We have George Pickens now. Deontay Johnson. Uh, Pat Fryermuth. We have guys who can make a ton of plays. And yes, there's plenty of other receivers in the past I could have easily mentioned, like Heinz Ward, etc. But you know, I'm just trying to say, even in recent memory, the big plays have been the reason we made it to uh, the Super Bowl and such. And that's exactly what we need to do. We need to go back to Steelers football. So when looking at it, I wish there were better right tackles. Again, Blake Fisher, I might just give a middle finger to the Eagles here and just go Blake Fisher, which I think I was saying I was going to do for them at number 44. But Nate Wiggins is incredible value. We're going to go Blake Fisher to say bye-bye to a, Ch- a Chakuma Okorafor because, uh, yeah, we need, we need the help. Blake Fisher's developmental, but... Honestly, we don't even play our first round pick at freaking left tackle. So, you know, we'll probably rest Blake Fisher too when we shouldn't. Pick number 54 for the Titans. Uh, just want to double check. I'm pretty sure I went a DB for y'all in the first round. Oh, we went Kingsley Suamataea. I like that because he's played left and right tackle too. So at this point, I'm looking at Xavier Leggett. And y'all went after a 6'3", 230 pound wide receiver before in the first round. I'm really liking him here. I love J.J. McCarthy. I'm not trying to throw shade on him. Just sometimes the value is so good on some of these players. Like, really good. I will want to look a little bit into the safety core, though. You know, you got... Oh, my God. Caleb Bullock is so good. He's really thin. He's like 190, but I mean, it's not really thin, to be fair. But, you know, I do think that, man, the value that's on the board is incredible. Like... This is just too good to pass on Kalen Bullock. I have him as a top 32 player. Big fan of him. Pick number 55. So Seattle, uh, we did not get to move up and select a defensive interior. Got bit out by Detroit here, but still got Tyleek Williams, which actually that does feel like a Seahawks first round pick. Hyper athletic, really talented guy. So big fan of that one, actually. I'm going to go Danny Stutzman here. I'm going to show him some love. Because I've heard a lot of really good things. Broshmo brought him up to me. So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt that Danny Sutzman's good. So if he sucks, it's Broshmo's fault. Just blame it on him. Regardless, at pick number 56, uh, we ended up going after a cornerback in Dwight McLaughlin. Here would have been, honestly, a really good spot for Danny Stutzman, actually. But looking at it, Junior Colson, Smale Munden, Jamon Dumas Johnson, those guys potentially can warrant some concern. But, hmm. For me, uh, I think I might want to continue addressing the offensive line. You know, the value is just super duper good here. We're looking at Cooper Beebe. Again, wild, wild. Like, I thought I was low on Cooper Beebe. I'm at 56. Everybody was saying how, like, I was just a big hater. And um, I'm not. So, I'm going to go with it. You know, screw it. They're going to go with a Kansas State player again. And uh, now you have Cooper BB pairing up with Deuce Vaughn. Pick number 57. Somehow, someway, Troy Franklin's still on the board. Xavier Leggett would be a beast in this offense, too. But I feel like that's kind of what we were kind of hoping out of, uh, what's his name, LaVisca Chenault. And that didn't happen. I might go Xavier Leggett for the fun factor. I have Troy Franklin. Well, I haven't studied Xavier Leggett in all 22. But we'll, we'll go Xavier Leggett for the fun factor. We will. Pick number 58. This is going to be a trade back. I don't see the value adding up here for me. And you have Xavier Worthy and Troy Franklin on the board, for example. And then uh, trying to see if there's any, is there anybody else that's the JJ McCarthy too? Again, 
Really good quarterback. Really good quarterback. So looking at the teams that still potentially need a quarterback, uh, I mean, we already got one with the Bucks. We already, I mean, honestly, the Seahawks could just be a little bit aggressive here. You know, I do think that at this point, they don't really need much else. I think their offensive line is still developing very well. I don't agree that guard and center need to be positions they target. You got your linebacker, you got your defensive interior. This was a team I believe to be able to go 14 and three. And JJ McCarthy is a perfect player to go into the system. So the Dolphins, you don't, I don't, I don't believe that the Dolphins need to go batshit crazy on uh, getting a lot of pick value at this point. So we're going to, I mean, still, you're, it's a relatively small trade actually here. This is 18 spots. So, I mean, I'm just curious. So technically two thirds to move up here gives it about 50% chance. So we're actually going to toss in a future third. And then because I'm seeing a massive pick gap here, we might end up tossing in like 159. So 57% chance of being accepted. Like, who cares? We'll toss in maybe like a future sixth. whoop de fucking do uh, We'll force it through, though. So Seattle then moves back up. I told you I'd make moves like this. And takes it J.J. McCarthy. Kind of just all the positions you needed. Pick number 59. So, again, it's honestly a team that doesn't need very much. I would actually look in the wide receiver market. This is where I would be open to another wide receiver. And Troy Franklin is excellent value. You know, Mike Evans is not getting any younger. Godwin is always injury prone. So it's just a good way to get a quality wide receiver. Pick number 60. I am potentially in the mood for Xavier Worthy at this point, just because he's so good. Uh, is He could be a really good fit in this role. You know, I wish, I swear, I feel so bad about this, but Brew McCoy's like ankle injury. Don't look it up if you can't handle watching someone's leg get broken, but just so sad. It really was so sad. Regardless, they got a uh, tackle and we are going to get them a defensive back because James, Jaden Hicks is awesome. Uh, I think I keep saying James Hicks. So apologies to Jaden. He deserves a lot more uh, than the respect that I just gave him by calling him James Hicks. Jaden Hicks has been an absolute lockdown beast. He just missed 44% of his tackles uh, versus Oregon State. But you know what? How well he's been playing everywhere else gives me enough reason to be fine with him. Pick number 61, the Ravens. Uh, I don't really know. if Are there any good corners on the board? Not really. Uh, Shaw Smith Wade, someone who I really like. But uh, Mason Smith's really good too, to be fair. But I'm actually going to make a trade here. And we're actually going to move up with the Carolina Panthers. Again, super small range trade. We have a lot of picks this year. So, you know, based on this, I'll, have, I'll just toss in like maybe a future fifth to move up five spots. Again, you can do your own negotiating. It's not going to affect the mock draft. And we'll go Xavier Worthy, the most requested player for the Panthers. So y'all get Xavier Worthy as well as Braylon Trice. I think that's a win-win. Pick number 62. So uh, just trying to see who is still available. We got Mason Smith here. This is ridiculous. Mason Smith's really good. I'm not trying to shout on him. Again, I'm pretending Shadur doesn't come out. Ruka Rojo. Like, dude, this is ridiculous. Uh, who are the Niners taking round one? Tyler Guyton, right tackle. So they still could be in the mood for interior offensive line. This does usually fit with the Niners range to go interior offensive line. I'm not a big fan of Cedric Van Pran. That's why I haven't been taking him. But you could go James Williams here. He could actually be that hybrid safety linebacker. But, man, I, might want to, I think I might want to trade out of this spot, too. Defensive interior with Mason Smith, incredible. And... We might potentially see that the Chiefs end up taking him if uh, the Niners do not act upon it. So the Niners are going to be trading back here as well. Looking at teams that could look at it, oh, Minnesota wouldn't be a bad spot to trade up here. They've been really aggressive in this mock draft. So I'd be open to that because I think that was a trade with Detroit that they had. Pretty sure. Uh, other teams that could be looking for it, you know, Cincinnati could be in the market. Vegas, did did we get an interior for Vegas yet? Because they need it desperately. They didn't. So we're moving up. We're doing it again. We're moving back up. So the Niners are trading back nine spots. And they'll give up a future fourth. Maybe they'll give up a little bit more. Again, do your own negotiating. It's not going to affect the mock draft. The Raiders move up and select Mason Smith. Defensive interior from LSU. 
because they also jumped their own in-division rivals, which is a big rip to KC because that would have been a big W, but Rook is pretty damn good as a consolation prize. He's an edge defensive interior hybrid at 295 pounds. And then finally, last but not least, the Philadelphia Eagles. Looking at the wide receivers who are available, um, not a fan, not a fan. I mean, I do like, um, I do like Roman Wilson, but I don't think you need to spend a pick at this point. Yeah, have we drafted? We've drafted linebacker, running back, and I think that's it. I think we just drafted a corner as well as a linebacker. Want to check one more time on those offensive tackles to see if there's anybody here. Sorry, I feel bad. <laughs> I, I do feel bad for the Eagles at this point. Uh, I do think running back should be on the market, and uh, Marshawn Lloyd is pretty much DeAndre Swift 2.0, so we'll get them another DeAndre Swift. So that's going to be the video. Thank you so much for watching and supporting. As always, take it easy. See you on the far side. Peace.